Which you guys got another video, Microsoft will block unsupported hardware for Windows 11. If you're receiving this message and you're on Windows 10 and you have an old system that is not supported and you can't upgrade to Windows 11 because you're receiving a message saying this PC doesn't currently meet the Windows 11 system requirements, then this video is for you. If you look at the system requirements that Microsoft have put in place, they're quite strict. And this means a lot of older computers are not compatible with Windows 11. Although many people have tested Windows 11 uh, on their old systems and said it works perfectly fine, why aren't they allowed to install or upgrade to Windows 11 on that old PC? Now, if you've been living under a rock somewhere and don't understand how people are managing to install Windows 11 or upgrade to Windows 11 on an incompatible or unsupported hardware PC, then check out my channel. There's tons of videos on methods and ways to be able to do that if you really want to do it. Should you do it? That is another question. A real simple way of doing it is using something like Flyby 11. I've shown this on my channel before, but it's had recent upgrades to the software. You can see it says CPU pop count on the screen and SSE 4.2 on the screen as well. This is doing a quick check on your system and it will then tell you whether it's worth upgrading to Windows 11. If these are green and it says upgrade probability very high, then you can proceed to carry on with the upgrade process. A word of warning, use this at your own risk. Microsoft is actively discouraging people from ways of upgrading to Windows 11 on unsupported hardware. We'll get into more details a little bit later on in the video. If you do decide to continue, you'll see something looking like this, and it's gonna give you the option to download a Windows 11 ISO from Microsoft's own website, or you can download it via Fido, which is recommended by this uh, actual application. This will open up a PowerShell window and start to download uh, the Windows 11 ISO. I do believe that these are still coming from the Microsoft servers. And once that's done, it will start to install Windows 11 on your system. It will upgrade from Windows 10 to Windows 11. It will bypass all of the account requirements, the Microsoft account, and give you a local account, and basically keep all your data and everything else, and you should be back at the desktop on Windows 11 on unsupported hardware. This is probably the most easiest method out there, and I've made a video on it, but if you want to see an updated video, let me know in the comments section down below. Now this document from Microsoft, which is the Windows 11 on devices that don't meet the minimum system requirements, this has been tidied up and it's been around since 21H2 version. And it goes into detail about unsupported hardware and they've removed any sort of methods to be able to bypass it and install it or upgrade to Windows 11. It does talk about some of the requirements that are needed and it also talks about some of the risks on here as well. For instance, it says when you install Windows 11 on a device that doesn't meet the minimum system requirements, a watermark is added to the Windows 11 desktop. They also make it clear now that it's not recommended to put this onto a system because you may run into compatibility issues and you may even have other issues as well with that computer like stability and things like that. So bear in mind that if you do upgrade on unsupported hardware, there's always the risk that Microsoft may pull the plug at any given time. They've made it quite difficult for people uh, that are trying to install this on systems that are really, really old. They've put a pop count in and it's made it impossible to install it on those systems. They've also talked about updates could be blocked. If they're mentioning this, I think they're already in the plan of finding a way to block updates for unsupported hardware. They've also talked about, you know, deliberate annoyances from Microsoft that warns you that you are running Windows 11 on unsupported hardware. These could be pop-ups and nag boxes and all sorts of things like that. So they talk about ways to install Windows 11 on this site as well and recommended me uh, methods to install Windows 11. And there's also other methods as well. There's no mention about bypassing anymore on this website and even adding code on their registry code to be able to bypass. They've taken all that off this document now. So they're trying to discourage people from uh, installing Windows 11 on unsupported hardware. Now, as it stands right now, you can still bypass the uh, restrictions and be able to install 
Windows 11 on unsupported hardware. If it's really old computers that doesn't support, like I mentioned, and it's got a pop count on it or other methods like SSE uh, 4.2, then you're not going to be able to install uh, Windows 11 on that system. But some of the systems are compatible and they can still get Windows 11 onto that system. And many people are using it on unsupported hardware. So I would say if you are going to do this on unsupported hardware, make sure you've got backups of all of your data just in case Microsoft pulled a plug and make it super difficult for you to continue to use it. So always uh, understand that you are not going to get any support from Microsoft on that system and they're not going to change their mind. If anything, they're going to ramp up and make it much more difficult to install or keep using that on unsupported hardware. Is it possible to completely block it 100%? I'm not so sure. But again, they will make it super difficult, just like they are making it super difficult with Microsoft accounts and local accounts. And I do believe as we get closer to the end of life of Windows 10, Microsoft will start making things a little bit more difficult. How are they going to do that? Well, it could be the fact that they're working on it right now with a version called uh, 25H2 or a version after that which will make it virtually impossible to install Windows 11 on unsupported hardware. If they can put pop counts in and things like that for older systems, they might be able to do something like that to block other CPUs and other types of hardware from installing Windows 11. So do I agree with that? Of course I don't. There's many people out there that can't afford a new computer and what I'd advise people do is look for alternative methods for running something on that system if you want to keep that computer. Regardless of how old it is, it's entirely up to you. It's your PC. If you want to continue to use that computer, then I really wouldn't advise going down the unsupported hardware route because I just think that's too much of a risk later on down the line. If you do want to do it, make sure you keep it very minimalist. Don't have a lot of data on there just in case something goes wrong. Make sure you've got backups of all your data. All your mission critical stuff, don't put on that system. Now, I get quite a few questions about Windows 10 LTSC and what is your options? Well, you've got Windows 10 LTSC and Windows 10 IoT LTSC, which has the longest life cycle of 2032. This is LTSC, a uh, non-IoT version. They are different, and this one is 21H2 uh, version. And again, if you wanted to download and install this on your system, you can do. You're going to run into issues of where you can get the ISO from. You would have to use an ISO off the internet. That's the first thing you'll have to do. And the second thing you'd have to do is get a legitimate key for it. And unfortunately, they are as rare as hen's teeth. You are not going to be able to find uh, those particular keys uh, that are legit. How do I know? Well, you can purchase keys like these online for around about £6. Uh, and what do you expect to get for £6 online? This is an enterprise edition version of Windows, which is not sold uh, to the general public. It's sold to businesses, and you have to have a business account and you have to have a business to be able to purchase them. And this is something a lot of YouTubers are not actually disclosing in their videos, which is very annoying because at the end of the day, if you are purchasing keys like these, you are going to end up with your fingers burnt because these are volume underscore Mac keys. Now, what that stands for is a type of volume license key uh, used by Microsoft for activating multiple, multiple computers. And it's that simple. That means the key that you've purchased will be able to activate on multiple computers. And the reason why that is, is because it's not owned by you. It's owned by a company and they're being sold on the Internet for cheap prices. Now, at the end of the day, you can see here January 12th, 2027 is the end of life for Windows 10 Enterprise LTSC. That is a 2021 version and it is 21 H2 uh, build. There is versions out there called IoT Enterprise versions, which are 2021 as well, and people are getting these confused with LTSE versions. These are completely different versions, and they have a 10-year lifespan, and these will end in 2032. Now, the YouTube channels like Tech Syndicate are obviously talking about uh, these particular types of keys as well, and these are not really a viable option for people unless you are going down the pirate route 
because you cannot purchase these keys as a home user. These keys are for point of sale systems in retail, automated uh, vending machines, industrial uh, control systems, digital signage that you see uh, at train stations, hospitals, uh, airports and things like that, healthcare services and things like that. So you cannot buy these as a legitimate key for home use. That is it, period. So if you're looking to use something like this to extend the life to 2032, understand what you're getting into. An option which is viable, which is Zorin OS, which is a Linux uh, operating system, which will be free to download, install on your old computer. It will receive uh, security updates and patches from them, and it's going to be a legit way of being able to continue to use that old computer for many years to come. So if you're just off the cut uh, of being able to upgrade to Windows 11, then check out Zorin OS or any other particular type of Linux distro. Zorin OS is super easy to use. It's super easy to install. I've made videos about it before and I'm not paid to sponsor uh, Zorin OS or any other Linux distro. I'm just giving you legitimate uh, options for you to be able to upgrade to. Now, eventually, if you want to test any Linux distro, you can do these online as well in a virtual machine, or you can use a website like this, which has tons of different Linux uh, options available for you to just boot into and test and have a look at it and see whether it's something that might interest you. You are going to have to make uh, changes to the way you use your computer. For instance, Linux is not Windows and Windows is not Linux. They are two different operating systems and you will have to make some adjustments when using Linux over Windows because obviously some of the software is not compatible. That being said, you could dual boot uh, Windows with Linux if you wanted to or even have a virtual machine like some Linux users do uh, where they have a Windows uh, operating system inside where they can use their proprietary software that they like to use or whatever way you want to go about doing it. There's plenty of options available to you. It just gives you another option available because believe it or not, I do believe that Microsoft will pull the plug on unsupported hardware at some point. It's just the path they're going down and they are making it super difficult for people to use uh, Windows 11 with uh, without uh, Microsoft accounts and they're being bombarded by adverts and all sorts of uh, privacy concerns with recall and other things. I've made videos on all of this stuff. You can check out my channel as a, a a big catalog of videos uh, discussing a lot of this stuff. So this is Zorin OS. Again, a really good option for people that are coming over from Windows to Linux. And I do think it's a viable option for a lot of people. It's not as hard as what people make out. And people talk about terminal and this and that. You might need to go into terminal, but you have to use the terminal inside Windows occasionally to do things as well. So it's not that difficult. You just need to uh, understand that it is a completely different operating system. If you've got any questions or need any help or anything like that, understanding what your options are, you can always join our Discord server. The link is in the video description. It's free to join and uh, I can give you some uh, viable options for your old system. Leave me all your thoughts in the comments section down below. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Big shout out to my YouTube members. I appreciate the support. I shall catch you in the next one. Have a lovely weekend. Bye for now.